From Clyde Golden, I'm Tim Yaden, and this is Input Doc. It's the podcast where we explore what marketers need and what agencies provide. Hey everybody, this is Tim. Today on Input Doc, I'm going to be chatting with Kyle Freeman. He's the head of SEO at Assurance IQ in Bellevue. You might remember that earlier this year, we had Kyle on for our first ever microcast. That was a 10 minute episode called The Three Must Have SEO Tools. In it, we reviewed keyword research, rank tracking, and website callers. If you haven't heard it, that microcast can be found on our website at clydegolden.com forward slash input doc. So Kyle is an SEO expert and I come from a content background. And so for me, I was really excited to learn about some of the more technical aspects of SEO, which we cover. That said, after chatting for a while, I think my main takeaway from the conversation is how SEO and content should partner together early and often. Let's get into it. So I'm somewhat familiar with assurance and Mm -hmm. you guys are certainly a move fast and break things crowd, unafraid to try new things. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like it here at assurance um, when My CMO reached out to me originally, you know, he's like, hey, I, you know, we're looking to fill in this SEO position. You know, I wasn't familiar with insurance, you know, I haven't been in the position to shop for my own insurance, you know, so I was doing some research and after talking to him, you know, he told me about all the big and exciting things that they're working on, told me about how the teams are put together. And it just sounded so exciting to me that I left the agency that I was working at to join Assurance because I wanted to be a part of this move fast, break things, and really kind of push the boundaries environment. I love that kind of stuff. I love really kind of pushing myself to, and being a part of something so big. There's that great phrase, was it by Patton, that it's better to violently execute a good plan today than the perfect plan next week? Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. I like that. And that often reminded me of whenever we've done work with Assurance, as in like, let's, let's, Let's knock this out. Let's see how it goes. Let's try it again. Yeah. You know, let's improve upon it. Exactly. And that's what I love. It's such a healthy environment. And that's how I got my start in SEO was, um, you know, working for this company that allowed me to really kind of try things out, learn things, pull some levers, break it, um, you know, learn, uh, learn fast, fail fast yeah. and, and uh, continue to do that. And I think that that's such a healthy em- environment for for all marketers, especially young marketers, and continuing to grow and pushing those boundaries. So I just love it. You started the SEO team at Assurance in all likelihood. Yes, right now it is a SEO team of one for now. We have a lot of big things and a lot of you know uh, future opportunities for the SEO team, content creation and so much more. Um, but right now I am leading that front, the first person to do SEO there. There's some knowledgeable people that have had experience in SEO at Assurance but definitely, you know, the first one to have the title and start kind of implementing a lot of those uh, uh, strategies. So search engine optimization technically would be the definition of SEO, but I feel like it means a thousand different things. And I talk to different people and there's always a different checklist or a different ethos or method. And if you're joining a company that's three years in and they already have quite a bit of traffic, what's your role? Yeah, absolutely. You know, interestingly, Assurance has not um, implemented a lot of, you know, content. We're not bringing in a lot of users through different areas of the funnel. You know, we're really missing out on a lot of top of funnel users, relying a lot on the bottom of the funnel, the branded searches, people knowing what they want in other areas of advertising. So my role is to really kind of start taking advantage of all of those so many different searches for the health insurance and personal finance industry and helping users really kind of guide them through that. Now, um, if anyone goes and looks at assurance.com, they'll be like, where is that? You know, I don't see him putting that. It's all coming in place. And um, really been focusing on, on leveraging the authority of our parent company that you mentioned, Prudential, and really leveraging them. They had so many opportunities. And in the personal finance and health insurance space, it's so important to um, focus on EAT, which is expertise, authority, and trust. And you'll even see Google themselves talk about it. That's where it comes from in their Google uh, Quality Rater Guidelines, which you can find online, and where they talk about how they don't want to rank just anybody for your money, your life terms. These are these are searches that people are, are performing to take care of their financial wellness. So just a non-authoritative website 
is not going to rank in top results. They want reliable sources. So I really focused a lot of efforts on helping out with uh, Prudential quite a bit. And they had a wonderful team over there, really got to collaborate with them, work with them. And now they have a great SEO over there that is just knocking out of the park. So really leveraging that authority and that expertise that's already existing uh, to kind of leverage a lot of those opportunities. So if somebody's searching for information on health insurance and you can get them to a Prudential site that has a high page authority, you mm-hmm. can redirect them to an assurance brand from there. Yeah, you know, we have been experimenting with some of those different approaches um, where that area, we, where we can kind of have that a little bit, that gray area of where more of assurance is going to be more of the expert and the authority than the Prudential is. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do have some, some pages up there that we recently rolled out, uh, seeing how those are going at the moment. But that is kind of the beginning approach. And now I'm moving on to phase two of just kind of focusing more on assurance right now and really kind of getting a lot of really cool things in place. Well, what is your responsibility or your charge at assurance? What what objective were you given when you joined? Oh, yeah. Um, that was to really kind of, as mentioned, just help increase, you know, bring in that organic traffic. I love that, you know, my uh, CMO, he understands the value of SEO and you won't find that a lot, um, which is really nice. So he understands the value in it. He understands the importance of it. So like, hey, let's build a strategy. He kind of just gave me the keys to all of SEO. Sometimes you'll kind of you know, come into an SEO position working at agencies um, where people still kind of like, I want, you know, they have their own vision, their own way that they want things to be done. But here, um, and what I recommend for other, you know, marketing managers or hire is to just give the keys to the SEO, see where they really can take it and see what they um, really can do for you if you aren't just fully into SEO already. So just really just focus on those different areas of the funnel. Right now, just really focusing on building a really good foundation about our core services and what people, what resources are people going to need when they come to the website? They're shopping for insurance, obviously. They're shopping for personal loans. Um, We know that. So what information do they need now like to really help them be confident with shopping with that for that information online. How do you establish that? How do you establish what questions somebody coming to your site may have? Yeah, absolutely. And that's just doing a lot of research online, um, looking at the keyword research. What are the most frequently searched for terms around our core service offerings? What are their pain points? Looking at our competitors has been a big one, seeing what content is performing well for them. And that is getting linked to a lot that really ranks well. And then really focusing on what is just important to know. So how to buy health insurance online, how to get started with a personal loan, that very just beginning kind of like, ah, yes, you know, what is my journey going to be? I know I need a personal loan right now for some debt consolidation or to help me out during these COVID pandemic times. What, what do I need to know about these next steps of my journey that I'm about to embark on talking to advisors and agents and inquiring on things? So just really kind of setting the expectations from here on out. And then as we'll continue to kind of grow and, and, and just kind of expand out from there, if that makes sense. It's almost impossible to do SEO if the person who runs the company doesn't actually understand who the audience is yes. and who you might want to sell to yes. and what they may need. Okay, so Clyde Golden is a creative agency in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And those are those are some, that's a metadata that I would use to describe it. Now that said, people who hire Clyde Golden, that may not be the metadata they would use to come and find me. Yes. And I'm really no better ranked than I was four years ago when I started. And I don't know if competition has grown or I have just not cracked that per se. On average, we get hired word of mouth, truly. Um and maybe we've had a client or two come in because they found something I wrote about an email case study Mm -hmm. or something along those lines. What am I missing? Absolutely. I'm glad you brought this up because I was listening to this other marketing podcast a couple of weeks ago and the person was on there for SEO. And he said that I don't get to do SEO for his new website because people don't know how to search for my product that I'm offering, but that's not true because people are always searching for a solution to their problem and your product is a solution to their problem. So you need to uh, find how they're searching for that 
for that solution. That's the top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. So someone's like, you know, you know, you provide a solution with a lot of great resources and creatives. And so how are people searching for that solution? Write some content, write some landing pages being like, hey, here's your problem. Here's the solution that we can help you with. We're going to help you out with that. And then also, um, you know, it might also sound like you did do some SEO efforts a few years ago. Um, and then that has since kind of shaken things up a little bit. But uh, algorithms have been crazy and ruthless and cut throughout these last few years. So not keeping up on that stuff can be very challenging and really set you back a little bit. Um, so that's just one of the areas that really comes to mind. I'm just really trying to put that out there. Um, I know that people are searching for what Clyde Golden offers. So just it, it becomes the more... Um, you could focus at a local level sometimes. I worked at an agency, we we were, you know, um, nationwide, but we also focus a lot on the local level too. So I did some searches last night on Google Trends and in Washington, nobody's searching for creative agency. They search for marketing agency, mm -hmm. which was eye-opening to me. Sometimes I feel like there's it's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of going back and double checking and seeing, have things changed or people searching for different things. Where I come from a content background, which is truly, you have, a, you have a product, you have an audience, what do they value? Can I create something of relevance to them? But I don't know that the ongoing maintenance is always occurring. Is that, is that the SEO partnership that we're looking for? Yeah, so an SEO agency is probably going to have a pretty good stronghold on keywords like marketing agency. But creative agency, while... Wow, it might get fewer searches. It might also be less competitive and a great place to start for now. And people often want to go for that top mountain top high search volume keyword, 15,000, 20,000 searches a month, as opposed to the one that only gets 500 searches a month, which I don't know what those search volumes are, but you probably might not rank for marketing agency for a couple of years if you just keep at it actively. But however, you could maybe optimize for creative agency and be in the top 10 results in the next few months. So which one really offers the quickest ROI? Now, while you continue to focus on the uh, less competitive terms, you optimize for that, you get in there, sure, it's not a crazy amount of traffic, but it is traffic and you are getting visibility. And then uh, boost building up your authority, seeing what it will take to get to that uh, marketing agency keyword, getting the top 10 results there. And that's going to take some time uh, to really kind of build up. And then once you think you're ready, start kind of heading over towards that direction of optimizing for that bigger mountaintop keyword. Um, when that defining moment is, is a little bit hard to just say, but that's just one way to kind of go about it. And especially coming back over to assurance, playing around with a lot of giants in this industry that are insurance leaders. You know, you know, there's nerd wallet, bank rate, uh, insurance providers that just have a stronghold on this um, have very strong authority so we have to start off finding where can we have opportunities and then we'll have to pivot later on once we build our authority and then the second part that you were saying was um, maintaining one of the best advice i've ever heard about maintenance of your pages is you know don't set it and just forget it always keep, do not just produce content just to produce it. Always keep your content ranking high. And then as soon as you see it drop down to the second page, re-optimize that page. Don't just keep producing new content. Keep all of your existing content just performing well. Um, I know that that's easier said than done sometimes, but that's just some of the best advice that I've heard uh, that people often overlook. There's a lot of terms that you use while you talk that you're fluent in that yeah. for me, I find intimidating. Let's run through page authority. Yeah, um, so page authority is not an official metric. That one was made by Moz uh, SEO tool here in Seattle. And page authority measures a lot of different factors to kind of allow this metric to show how authoritative your page is. And there's also, uh, compared to other pages online, and there's also domain authority, but they're measured very similarly. And one of the main factors that they're looking at with that page and domain authority is the backlinks pointing to 
the page or the domain and then it takes those into consideration and it's not just taking the number of domains it's taking how many unique domains from unique links from uh from referring domains so if you know clyde golden linked out to assurance 20 times well only a few of those are really going to be worth value you can't just keep linking to us be like boost our authority clyde golden keep sending those over here um it's not going to work that way so you want to get a lot of different domains you want to get those from domains that also have a high domain and page authority um because that authority will now come over to your site a little bit and there's this if you look up the uh page rank uh math algorithm there it'll blow your mind if you ever like looked at it i i worked with an seo he was able to make pretty good sense of it and break it down for us he's so smart and um but it's a very kind of intimidating math equation that they put together to kind of help determine the authority of this so these tools like moz uh hrefs have their own tool and all these other own tools have their own way of kind of measuring these page and domain authorities um but it's a great metric to kind of see how you uh, are put up against competitors and going up for those keywords that are highly competitive. Like, can I take on what's their domain authority in the top 10 results? Am I going to be able to compete in that? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a domain authority of 15 and their fifties. You can definitely cross that one off and come back to that one at a later time. But if it's a smaller difference, you can definitely just because they're higher than you doesn't mean that you won't outrank them. That's very interesting. How did you get started in this? So I started out in my journey. I wanted to be a a, a well-rounded marketer, a well-rounded digital marketer. I really found it to be pretty cool. And um, I got this job and, uh, you know, digital marketing jobs were slim pickings in Ogden, Utah, where I'm from. What year was this? This was in 2013. Um, so, and I also recently came out of the Marine Corps. So a lot of skills weren't really translating over. And, and not only were the jobs slim pickings, but my experience was as well. Um, but I, I, I luckily through some networking, some great opportunities, I got this job as an email marketer at this agency and it was really great. I worked there for two and a half years and, um, uh, you know, really learned a, a lot about HTML there and also got into social media marketing as well, because we would build these landing pages for our users. And then we would drive traffic through email and social media posts to these landing pages and things went really well there. But I still felt like, you know, after spending two and a half years there that I really wanted to continue to kind of grow my experience. I didn't want to be stuck in email marketing or anything like that. So I went on and went to this startup um, down in Salt Lake City where they were an internet of things startup with wireless sensors. And I got to write blog articles. Um, and I recently checked on those to see how those perform still to today with, you know, this is where I started to want to learn about SEO. Um, I was doing email marketing still, a little bit of PPC and um, some social media, but I still wasn't getting that SEO knowledge that I wanted, you know? So I, I bought this SEO for dummies book. It was like, four books in one. And I'm just going through this book, riding the train into work, reading SEO for dummies. And, um, and I just had so many questions about SEO. It was like my biggest hole of just being like, I don't get it. I see other job listings that are really wanting this as a skill set, And I'm like, I don't get it. You're telling me to get the keywords. What do I do with the keywords? Where do I put these? How do I use them? Um, so I just had so many questions. So I was like, that's it. Um, I, so I just applied to a full-time SEO position at a car dealership and, um, and it was a, it was a great car dealership. There was actually 55 different dealerships I had to manage, uh, SEO for, which became a lot. But so I took on this full-time SEO position as an SEO coordinator. And again, another great company that let me, um, fail and make mistakes, try things out. I did some wild stuff. I was reading, you know, the SEO for dummies. And then I got the art of SEO, which is like this 900 page book. I wasn't even able to fit my lunch in my backpack anymore, but it was all right. I was learning SEO. I was reading a chapter uh, a day and I was like, I'm going to apply this chapter, these skills today on a website. I'm going to really try these things out and learn these things. And I was the only SEO there and, you know, and I was just, I didn't really have any mentors still. So it was kind of hard to learn, got into that. And then um, I just really enjoyed it. And then there was this SEO manager position. I was there for six months and there was this SEO manager position for this 
global enterprise company. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's see what this what this does. Got that job, had a great mentor, and learned so much more there. And it was just, uh, I just fell in love from there, and I just absolutely just loved. SEO and that always changing landscape, the algorithms, um, you know, nothing's stale in SEO. And there's all these different facets of SEO that you can venture down. Um, and, and you as an individual can really kind of find what you want to be an expert on within SEO. Do you want to be an expert with SEO and content? Do you want to focus on technical in SEO? Um, there's also just local SEO and so much more. And it's just a very exciting area for me that's always evolving and uh, always more areas to learn and grow. I always find that if I combine somebody who is smart and optimistic and enthusiastic and they have a fire in their belly to learn about it, that's the choice. And I have a sense that you've been that higher several times and that you're quite a bit self-taught, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I, I like to be self-taught. I, any, I like your quote from your, your, one of your recent podcasts where you said, if you hear something that makes you nervous, chase it. And that, I was like, I never heard that before, but that describes how I've kind of approached, um, SEO and digital marketing quite a bit. I'm like, there's a big question mark in that area. I don't understand it. Now I'm going to go dedicate time to that. I'm going to go learn this thing because I don't like there to be this hole of like something I don't know. And, and for anyone else out there listening, you don't have to be an expert at everything SEO. You don't have to be like, I need to know log file analysis. I need to understand JavaScript and how that plays in. Know enough to have conversations and to ask questions questions. That's all you need um, to continue to grow and, and, and have that knowledge. But I love just always learning. And it's kind of weird. Um, and I, cause I consider SEO as like a hobby for me. I just genuinely enjoy it. Um, and I am fun at parties. I trust me, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do have other fun things to talk about, but um, you know, and my best friend, he's a marketer as well. And I love just kind of picking his brain, totally different marketer, um, he really helps kind of bring some more insights into me. So I'm not just like pigeonholed on SEO. And it's just really great to surround yourself by those other people quite a bit. It's purely understanding the wants and needs of people and how to speak to them. And it's just, it's just the funnest thing of all time. Yeah, it absolutely is. I love collaborating with other teams um, and, uh, you know, working at, Enterprise level companies is a lot of fun because there's so many different people. There's all these different experts in their own areas. And I also, at a early, my early years of the SEO, I found that a little bit frustrating because again, I still wanted to be well-rounded. I wanted to be knowledgeable. Um, so that, that's why I ended up leaving some of the enterprise level companies early on in my career to go and do freelance because I wanted to pull more levers on my own. I wanted to actually go into Google Analytics and make changes, make Google Data Studio dashboards and actually go into the HTML of the page and make changes. And uh, so I left these big companies where it's so restricting and, um, and I went and pursued that kind of like, I need to pull more levers. I really need to do this as an SEO. I, I got so much of that um, as a freelancer and as a SEO team lead at a marketing agency. I got to do a lot of that later on. And now I'm pretty happy with that and got all that experience. And now I'm going to go uh, back over to these you know large companies where I get to focus on my stuff. And, uh, um, and it's just really great. And I recommend that for everyone to you know, find ways to continue to pull levers. Don't get stagnant in what you're doing. Once you're getting stagnant, you're not learning. Um, so always find some new lever to be pulling. Hey listeners, it's Megan O'Neill, marketing coordinator at Clyde Golden and producer of your favorite podcast, Input Doc. If you're enjoying listening to this episode, I have a feeling you might want to check out our newsletter. No, I'm not a psychic. I couldn't guess how you take your coffee, but I am pretty sure about this one. So go to clydegolden.com forward slash report to sign up and get tips, tricks, and research delivered right to your inbox. Thanks for listening. Now back to the show. I would imagine that an SEO professional crosses over with quite a few different disciplines in marketing and which groups do you feel should work together more that don't? Yeah. You know, I, I considered this one of the biggest SEO pitfalls of SEO being so siloed and it should not be SEO really needs to be with a lot of different groups. And just a quick story for answer that is 
one of those enterprise companies that I went and worked for, I was in a whole nother building than the marketing team, the content writers and everyone. And I was not with them at all. I wasn't in the marketing department and it was just like so hard. The bridge uh, between us was so, the gap between us was so big and it was really hard to collaborate. So I highly recommend that you um, as an SEO or a manager over SEOs, you really bring together your obviously marketing team to work with SEOs. Um, and also your social media, your content, uh, get your analytics team in SEO working together if they're not already. And then also your developers and IT should be working with your SEOs. So before they make any big changes, before they roll out anything new, they should run that by SEO to get their thoughts because one of the biggest problems I ever saw working at an agency, people would come to us panic and be like, our website traffic is gone. Like, cool, what recent changes did you make? Oh, well, our developers added on this you know, we just redesigned our website, obviously. Look how great it looks. It's like, yeah, but it's not crawlable. It's not indexable by search engines. And you didn't have SEO consulting you along the way. Uh, and then also just uh, one of the other ones that's highly under underrated, underestimated is SEO and the PR team. There's so many ways that they, those two can collaborate together. Going back to that link building, getting links from other websites, PR is going to be the one that helps you get there. So it's not a one-way relationship either where all these teams help SEO, but SEO honestly does support all of those teams. It's a very fair uh, two-way relationship and uh, continue to find ways for your SEOs to be a, a bigger part in your um, in your company. There's so many different opportunities there. And one of the ways that I overcame that in an enterprise level company and a global company is I uh, we gave global we gave company wide trainings and we put together um, these SEO summits and um, we just educated everyone on what we do and how we can help you. And it was huge. The feedback was great. We were just having all these meetings. We were so busy and just being a part of all these other teams afterwards. It was just very powerful. Yeah, I need an SEO expert in my life. Yeah, I do. I can tell. And the more that I learn, the more that I realize this and that, you know, we make some pretty huge decisions for clients as mm -hmm. far as content. And we do take SEO into account, but I feel, you know, I have a content strategist who I work very closely with, mm -hmm. um, a director of production I work very closely with, developers I work close, closely with. I bring everybody in early on and what are we, what are we gonna create and what should we watch out for and how do we wanna plan this? And I feel like SEO is probably overlooked quite a bit I've always been a little skeptical at a strictly SEO agency and apologies to all strictly SEO agencies out there. Cause I'm coming from a place of weakness on this subject, but if you're not tied in with everybody else, what are you doing? Yeah, that is such a great like uh, call out there. And those strictly SEO agencies, you know, I think they have realized that you can't just be a one trick pony. And um, so I think they are kind of like trying to expand out into multiple services, but mainly really trying to pair SEO with content. But, um, but if SEO doesn't have the support and as a team lead, I would have to, uh, at an agency, I would have to work out, um, you know, when working with clients, sometimes they would Try So we were a full service marketing agency and we had content analytics and so much more. Who are you working for? Which agency? Portent. Portent. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So really just a smart group of people. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was like, yeah, I'm moving out there. I'm going to go work with y'all. This is like, they're, they're so smart. They have so many brilliant minds over there. I can't say enough good things about them. And so um, anytime, it was so interesting to see clients that would hire us out and be like, yeah, yeah, we want to improve our SEO. Like, oh, all right, great. We're going to put you up with some SEO services. We're going to get some content creation in there. They're like, no, 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 we don't want content. We just want SEO. It's like, no, no, that's not how it works. No. And they're like, well, we don't want that. We just want SEO. It's like, well, SEO can't work without content. So um, later on, we just started to realize that it's like, we don't separate these two uh -huh. services. Uh -huh. Live under the same roof here. Um, and that's how it should be for a lot of people is just really making sure that we don't silo SEO and we are pairing that up to get the most use out of it. And, um, and, and, and the same goes for 
content writers that think that they're SEOs. I know that they are brilliant minds. They really are. And I know that they get SEO, but they don't know SEO. And that's one of the bigger problems that I've been seeing is that um, is, is there's so much more to SEO than just being like, I understand how to use keywords and do keyword research. There's so much more to that, to being successful. Um, so we need each other, SEO and content, content SEO. What is it that I should know that I probably don't know? Because I'm a I'm in content, and I love doing content. Well, I'll um, I guess I'll tell you the scarier part right now, and it just kind of seems like the future of SEO is that we're getting more and more away from keywords. Um, you know what I mean? Well, with Google, um, Google a year ago rolled out the BERT algorithm update, which was a big one. Um, so, and how what that was was Google you know, um, went from reading text from left to right to now being able to read text from left to right in right to left to fully understand the context of the text. It's just mind blowing. So now using natural language processing, Google knows exactly what your content's about so much better and clearer by being able to do that. And then there's also um, in recent news, uh, ranking passages on a web page. So now if you wrote about all the different types of health insurance and you had in there COBRA, short-term health insurance, uh, you know, ACA plans and so much more. Typically in the past, we would only be able to rank for um, the keyword that we were going for, which was different types of life and uh, different types of health insurance, I mean. And it's like, wow, that's exciting. So that's why we have to put all of that in there. But now with these passages and ranking those, Google's able to read that, that paragraph that you wrote about short-term health insurance. And if they feel that that was one of the best paragraphs, then it will rank for information about short-term health insurance. It's just mind blowing that we're getting more about that quality of content. So I guess that's good news for you. I just became more relevant. <laughs> yeah, actually, now I think about it. So, and then this is one of the bigger things I want to just share for everyone, whether you formally did SEO for a little bit or you um, are an SEO, it's, it's the power to unlearn. I'm not telling you to forget everything you learned, but don't get so caught up in your old ways of SEO. Start really seeing where it's going and getting ready for it. Ask questions. What are you guys thinking this is going? We all don't know. We're all just making guesses. I'm reading blog articles, following SEO leaders on Twitter, and I'm just really trying to see where this is going. So this is still very new information. So this, hopefully this ages well and um, doesn't come back to haunt me. But um, that's one of the areas where I'm going where it's, I'm excited about because I'm writing a lot of like um, really in-depth content topics like, you know, different types of life insurance and how they work for you. Before I was only going to be ranking for that keyword, different types of life insurance. But now I can maybe get those keywords around whole term life insurance and just really just, it opens up so much more. But um, keep in mind that they are anticipating that this will only affect about 7% of search queries, not a big shakeup. But let's continue to keep our eye on this, continue to see where it goes um, and not just dis dismiss these little changes, but um, but by, by looking at the pattern of Google and the direction that they have really rolled out these algorithms, that's kind of beginning to be what I'm thinking and what I'm hearing from other experts. What about the role of images in search? I mean, uh, on Google, the image link is just as big as anything else. And I, and I, and I consistently go searching for content via an image, hoping that, mm -hmm. like if I'm looking for a technical detail in something that I'm working on, Yes, um, yes. Then I will search through images until I stumble into what I think looks relevant and then go in and take mm -hmm. a look and read read on. H how to fix a garage door, for instance, yeah. or something like that. No, that's great. And um, it sounds like you and I are working on the same projects. But um, so the, the images will have a different sort of visibility and dominance depending on the search intent. So if users often search for that and click on images, Google's just going to make it part of the main search engine result page for when you search for, um, you know, I've been recently uh, trying to, we recently bought a house and we've been looking working on a lot of interior design things. So I'm trying to get some inspiration, how to, what colors to paint a 
darker basement. It doesn't get a lot of natural light. And I'm searching for that. And then up there will be images of interior design. And that's usually where I go as well and just look for inspiration through those images. So it really does depend on the search on how visible images will be. We don't always need to be optimizing for images, but understanding that search intent, do the search yourself. See, are images pretty dominant here? And then if not, it's still okay to optimize for images. Um, and how you do that optimize for images is Google still taking the context of what's on your page. And so your page still needs to be about what you want to rank for, that image to rank for, but also for the image alt text, which is mainly used for accessibility purposes, but you're kind of giving a context of that images, image um, for any reason that it can't show up or someone has to use a screen reader, um, it'll be read describing that image to that person. Um, so that's one of the areas, uh, writing content about it. And then I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, you can also track your image search uh, performance through Google Search Console. You can now see how often people are finding you through images, what pages and what search queries that they're using to find you uh, with those. Options. I'm using Google Analytics, but I, and I have yeah. Google Search Console, but I don't mm -hmm. particularly follow it. I also stare yeah. at the Squarespace analytics that are served up. I suppose I have MailChimp analytics, it, wherever I can get any little bit of info, what other tools should I be using? And what, what is a business owner should I be paying for? Good question. And I really try not, I'm not a big fan of those big, expensive, all in one package tools. I love all my different tools for different reasons. I, as the SEO team here at Assurance will grow, they'll probably be frustrated with me, the, the young, um, SEOs because I'm like, well, you have to go to this tool for that one because I really like them for this feature. That's just how I am. And those all-in-one package ones just don't do it for me. So I like, you know, um, just find what works for you. And uh, if the enterprise tools do work for you, that's great too. But the tool that I recommend from an SEO perspective, you definitely need quality keyword research. Do not underestimate that. There are free keyword research tools out there. Um, but I highly recommend going to the, um, the leaders in that, and that's SEMrush, Ahrefs, and Moz. Those three are your safest bets. Um, Moz, I think, even kind of expanded their service offerings to cover some things within social media. I have to follow up on that. Um, so there's a lot of, do your research on them, see which one really meets your needs. I would say those three, you'll get very reliable information when it comes to keyword research and, um, and some other valuable SEO information. The cool thing about SEM Russian Ahrefs is you can also crawl your website to find technical issues, which is often underestimated. Again, going back to my time at the at Port and the Marketing Agency, everyone would come to us and be like, there's something wrong with our site. What is it? Usually a technical issue that got overlooked. Those tools will help highlight those issues for you then you can just either hire a developer or send it over to your IT development team and get that resolved. Um, so at a very high level, that's what I would recommend. And just making sure that you have good quality keyword research tools um, available. Are there any courses or anything like that? I know there's like a one hour guide to SEO on Moz that is. Yeah, good question. There is so many, everyone's done such a good job of creating these different courses. Um, I know that Distilled has an amazing SEO course um, that I've used before and I just, I love what they put together. That one's a paid one. Um, the Moz one's a SEO 101. I think they might have a paid version too. I am not too sure about that. They've done really good about going back to basics. And that's what I've loved in recent years, SEO has gone back to basics. Before it was like, we're only looking forward. You got to go read the old articles and then catch up. But now everyone's going back to basics. Ahrefs um, does really good with going back to basics, SEO 101. They also have a really good YouTube channel that you can just kind of learn and understand um, SEO. And then uh, I'm a big fan of books and I love reading books. I love just sitting down at night and just going through that and using it as a reference guide, looking through the table of contents, be like, ooh, I wanna learn that. Flip over to that page and just kind of dive into that. And I truly do enjoy that approach, but uh, warning to anyone that is looking to just buy books on SEO, check the date on those before you buy them. Anything that's older than two years, don't buy it, it's outdated. Um, so keep up on that. 
And then that's kind of my approach. Follow leaders and industry experts on social media. They're always talking about new things and they'll always kind of keep you up to date a little bit. You're a marketing manager and you need an, you need an SEO consultant. What are you looking for in a consultant, at, either at an agency or at a, as a freelancer? Yeah, great question there. And I'm, I'm like trying to reflect back because I wrote a blog article about this. I'm like, what did I say on that a year ago? Um, so, but at a, first thing that comes to mind is I would really get a good feel on how this person keeps up with SEO and what is their approach. Now you have to do some homework yourself as the hiring person just to get your own opinion on this and ask questions. You don't have to be not the expert at it, but ask questions where, you know, you're hearing this information about where SEO is going, bring that up, see if they had a pulse on that. You really want people that are um, staying ahead of the industry because the second you fall back, fall behind in the SEO industry is where you'll have to play a lot of catch up to get back up, especially in competitive industries. So you don't want to risk that. So you want to look for, you know, um, get a good, get a good pulse on that and ask the same questions that you asked earlier about what tools, what tools are you using to get this information? If you're working with a freelancer and they're tight on money, um, and they're like, ah, oh, use, you know, do your research on that tool to see if that's a, that's a great one to be using because you don't want to be misled by that inaccurate information either. I know that's kind of vague and kind of hard to pinpoint for some people that don't know. Um, and then, uh, just asking questions about some of their successes, doing some research on seeing like who else have you worked with in the past, if you can share that with me, and just really looking at how well they move the needle. What was your approach for that? Where have you had your greatest successes working with other clients? And uh, have you worked with other people in this industry? And what have you seen works well? What do you see is working well for my competitors as well? Just asking all those questions, if they can really come to you with a vision that really aligns to what you're trying to accomplish, then you're, you'll be in good hands. And times that you've worked with agencies where it didn't go well, what are, what are hallmarks of that? What are things that you see over and over? Oh, yes. I have worked with agencies that didn't go well. I've worked with uh, agencies that were just too keyword focused, and it wasn't really a holistic SEO strategy. It was more of a plug and play approach of like, let's put keywords here, keywords here, which is a very primitive SEO approach, which tells me that things are just kind of getting stagnant a little bit over there, and they really need to shake some things up. And ultimately, just not listening to you and your goals, um, just misaligning on a lot of things. Um, that does happen and just really kind of bringing that back a little bit. Um, that's been some of the more um, hidden fees. I've seen that come up before. Um, you're like, all right, yeah, you're going to help us out with outreach. And all of a sudden they're trying to bill you more for per link and stuff. I've had some, you know, uh, confrontations there, not confrontations, but some frustrations there. And then um, another great approach that just came to mind of just trying to filter out these agencies or freelancers is do your homework on, uh, go read their blog. And that's like the biggest indicator to me is, what are they writing about? Are they writing about anything at all? Or, you know, um, go see really where they're at. And um, when working at Portent, we were talking about a lot of really just kind of advanced things around, you know, um, so many different things, which really led to a lot of great opportunities. So what are these agencies talking about? And look at their website. How are they applying SEO to their own website? It's such a giveaway. And in this blog article, I totally called out this local agency. I, you know, blurred some things out, but they just keyword stuff their whole page. Seattle SEO agency, Seattle SEO agency. It's like, do you want that to your website? Because that's how you get penalized. That's how you won't be ranking at all. And you'll be begging Google to put you back in the search results um, and, and blaming that on your um, SEO agency there. It's less, a, it's less authority and more authenticity, it sounds like, that takes the day in SEO. Yeah, it really does. And can't put, you know... Um, a price on just quality work there. So I know I see it a lot. 
I've seen it with uh, some friends that started their own website and then they hired this group internationally um, to do their SEO for them. And it was very outdated practices. I'm like, how much are you trying to save? Because it's going to hurt you so much more in the long run. Let me help you with that. And um, but SEO will absolutely pay for itself. And when you are getting those high ranking keywords and getting that authority on your website. There's so much great benefit to that. A perfectly selfish question is posting the transcript of these podcasts useful on the website. Yes, very useful. You should put the transcript on there because um, while posting these videos on YouTube, uh, Google, YouTube's owned by Google, Google can crawl the made up transcript that YouTube produces and understand the context of it. Um, but putting that on your page will definitely um, help Google crawl that and rank your page for any relevant queries that we mentioned here. But also it'll send strong, strong signals to Google that, hey, Clyde Golden is talking about SEO. So when you look to kind of venture into SEO, um, you'll have all these kind of indicators. Search engines will be like, oh yeah, no, they've totally talked about SEO. And, um, and then just kind of send those signals all around your website a little bit. So please do that. It'll be uh, highly beneficial. Cool. We have been doing that. It is yeah. next to the interview itself, perhaps mm -hmm. the most time consuming part, which is cleaning up the, uh, we use rev.com and uh, to run a transcript of any videos that like of this video, we'll run it through. And then to clean that up, uh, it takes a bit of time. Yeah. But I love going back and just reading them later. I find so many interesting things. Like I, I, these conversations are fascinating and they're difficult while I do them. I really learn from them when I go back and listen to them or take a look at them. I was like, well, what did Kyle say about this? You know? Yes. I always um, go back to re-listen to podcasts. There's a lot of information that we're put, giving out here and I would love the opportunity to go back and read it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And just read through it. Cause I'm like, what minute Mark was that at? Instead you can do either a control find or just scroll through real quick and scan it. And um and, and depending on how you format it, it could be a very digestible read. For us, a podcast made a lot of sense. I would say my team is as much of an audience for this podcast as is anybody else. And that we're just trying to learn and get better. And so That's great. We, were, we were talking recently and I was like, I have a thousand SEO questions. And I was like, I know a guy. <laughs> Let's call Kyle. Well, I'm really glad that I was thought of. I, I love that. And I really love just talking about SEO. And, and that was one of the things that I did when I was blogging about SEO on a, you know, the agency's website is I would pick sometimes topics that were challenging to me. I'm like, I know I can learn this. I just need to do a lot of research, ask other people, work with my team. And I want to learn this as I write it, you know, I uh, hope that doesn't, you know, show my hand too much, but I really do just enjoy pushing the boundaries of just how to really learn this and you get to kind of share that perspective with this podcast on being like you know we're, we're, we're managers we're directors we're leaders of marketers um, and again you don't have to be experts at everything um, and this is a great opportunity for you to ask genuine questions that other people are going to have too so I really do love that and I think it's going to be very relatable for a large audience. Do you have some favorite groups here in town uh, that you meet up with to talk about SEO or are there any resources that you would point people towards? Yeah, here in Seattle, um, this is one of my big appeals for moving out to Seattle is the community out here. There's a lot of great companies out here, which I knew, but coming out here, the community of SEO itself is amazing. So um, a good friend of mine, Alex Ratitsky, he does uh, SEO beers here in Seattle. And I think there's other ones like in, in Denver as well, um, where us SEOs, we get together um, post pandemic, we'll get together again. And we will, uh, we just chat and it's been such great networking. We don't just talk about SEO. We are cool people. Um, but you know, Brittany Muller will show up, Rand Fishkin's there sometimes and so many like smart minds and you do get the chance to talk about SEO with them. I've also networked with some of the um, other team leads at other agencies. While I was a team lead at another competitive agency, but we got to talk and collaborate and be like, here's some of the obstacles I'm having. What are you, you know, how did you overcome this? And they're so open to sharing their knowledge. The SEO community is fun. We're very niche, we're a unique group of people. Um, so there's the uh, net, 
SEO Beers can be found at seattleseobeers.com. You can follow them on Twitter, their email newsletter kind of saying like, hey, you know, here's when we're meeting up. And then there's also the Seattle Search Network. And then they're just like, uh, they do these uh, very affordable, like in-person once a month trainings, again, post-pandemic. Uh, it'll come around again. And they are really great for our beginner to intermediate SEOs, digital marketers, and uh, really kind of learning a little bit more uh, about SEO, but they do venture beyond that content writing, content creation, content strategy, and uh, more info about them can be found at seattlesearchnetwork.org. And I love what people are putting together here in Seattle. I love the community here, but one of the things I regret not doing while in the smaller areas of uh, Ogden and Salt Lake City, Utah, is not doing these myself and putting these groups together myself. So anyone else that's not in the Seattle area, you can start this stuff. You don't have to be the expert. Start groups, start communities. The networking is phenomenal. And just having someone that you can message on Twitter or LinkedIn, be like, hey, this is what I'm kind of seeing. Y'all help me out. Um, the community's there for you. And you don't have to be alone and trying to figure things out, especially with the unique situations that SEO can offer you. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you visiting Input Doc. Uh, Would you mind letting people know where they could learn more about you? Yes. uh, Follow me on Twitter, Kyle J. Freeman, uh, J as in Jordan. Uh, I post irregularly about SEO there and uh, definitely um, great area. If you do have any SEO questions, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or through Twitter there. And I'll be happy to just provide any advice or just kind of help along the way. I will do my best to keep up to date on latest SEO trends and sharing my thoughts and advice along the way. Well, thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks a lot, Tim. Take care. You've been listening to Input Doc. Mr. Reference, are you more of a visual learner? Then check out clydegolden.com forward slash input doc for the transcript and links to the topics in this episode. Now, if this conversation has left you wishing for more marketing strategies that will fuel your business's growth, we can help. Email Tim at ClydeGolden.com to get started. Input Doc is hosted by Tim Yaden, produced by me, and edited by Lily Jew. The music and cover art were created by Brian Leahy. A special thank you to all the guests who give us their valuable time and insights. Now, if you're still listening, then you're probably driving. And we do not condone looking at your phone while you drive. But if you're not driving, have you given us a five-star review yet? Have you subscribed to our podcast? Just a bit of food for thought from your favorite producer, Megan O'Neill. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.